Hi YouTube, it's me Rachel. Um, before I start, what I have came, I have come to say today. Um, let me just pray, Father. You see, my heart is heavy, and my heart is concerned, God. I pray for the nation of Canada, God, that we will just get our act together. Lord, I'm concerned because we've lost our morals, Father, and we just need you to saturate this nation. Come now, Lord Jesus, purify this nation in your blood, Father, and I pray, Lord God, that, that the church in Canada, all over Canada, from Ontario to BC to every province, every territory, Lord Jesus, will rise and call on the name of Jesus. We need you um, in Canada more than ever, Father. Lord God, you, we have, we have lost, we have lost a sense of ourselves, God, and lost a sense of you, God. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll bring us back to the nation that you wanted us to be. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Hi, YouTube. Um, as as many of you know, I'm from Toronto, Ontario, and um, I don't know if you've heard in the news. I know Canadians have heard, um, but today is the first legal day of. Cannabis, marijuana, pot, whatever name you want to give it. Today is the first legal day of it in Canada, in Ontario, in my province. Um, and I woke up today with just a heavy heart because, uh, for one thing, we have no idea what the long-term effects of this will be, both on our society, on our health, on our children. And I'm just, I'm just like, Lord, what are we doing? Like, I think this all happened because the church stopped praying. The church stopped being the church. And we're just so content to sit in our services on Sunday or Wednesday, whatever we have it, and just like uh, jump around and, or sing in the four walls of the church while the world is crying out for us. And this scares me because they say that marijuana is a gateway drug, so I'm like, if they're legalizing this in my province, what's going to happen 10 years down the road? <laughs> Will they legalize other now street drugs in, in, the, uh, in, in the form, not the form, it, with, with the feeling that Oh, people, as long as you're over 18, you can do what you want. And it, I don't know if this scares anybody one else. I shouldn't say I'm scared, because I know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But I'm concerned because we are not concerned. We don't seem like the church has become like a club that we just go once a week, we, we shout, we sing, we praise, and then we go home to our regular lives while the devil is running amok. But what we as Canadians and all around the world need to do is start praying, start fasting, start seeking the Lord for strategy, not how to grow our own churches, not how to grow our own ministries or how to, how to lift up ourselves. But we need to be asking, 
what the world needs, what strategies do we need to to have the tools to pull to um, to spread the gospel and the gospel will pull people out of darkness into his marvelous light. I don't I think we've done church uh, for too long. We've done denominationalism for too long. We've done all that crap for too long. And where has it gotten us? To the point where not a world, where, where something this big is going on in our city, in our province, in our world, and no one says anything about it. Well, I'm speaking about it because it is wrong. And I will t I, I will tell you that it is wrong because people are dying and we're saying, okay, you could just you, you could just slowly kill yourself because oh marijuana may not kill you right away, but it will kill kill you over time time especially if you're a teenager and I think I think by legalize when you legalize something you're saying our country stands by this you're saying that our country thinks thinks it's okay we can do this um, and it just it just has me has me a bit concerned that we're just saying, okay, they're legalizing marijuana t this week, so let's just let's just jump and shout as usual, or let's just listen to a homily or a sermon. God's coming anyway. We don't need to be concerned. We need to wake up, church. We need to be concerned. We need to take back our country. We need to take back our world. We need to say, you know what, uh-uh, this is enough. This is enough, we're not taking it anymore. We're not doing it anymore. But it's like we're scared to say what's wrong is wrong. Um, it's like we've acclimated, even myself. I was talking to someone um, one day and I said, and I said, well, if they, whatever, and I said, what am I saying now? It's wrong. N not about the same issue, but uh, on another issue. It's like we've gotten too, too lackadaisical, too lazy, too, too complacent as far as the gospel comes up and we we're scared and the lord is calling for this country and the united states and around the world to stand up and say no this is enough we've had it we're not taking it anymore and to share the gospel with the world people are hurting people need us People in our own families need us. People at our workplaces need us. And and I cry out to the Lord because I know that he can heal the world. But we need to get out of our little church box like that we go from 11 to whatever time and we just hear a sermon. It has to go deeper than that. I'm... I'm thinking about um, maybe a change of church structure. We've been doing the same structure in our churches, depending on your denomination, for years. And while the world needs us, and we're just and and we and we do um, what we call missions. Um, maybe once a month or we have a missions month or whatever but missions the mission field is right outside our front door every day and i think what what we first need to do 
and start with love and not and not the weak kind of love that says, oh, God loves you and he'll accept you however you are. Yes, that's true, but he does love you more than anything and he will accept you the way you are, but he, but he also loves you fiercely. He'll, he'll love you until you change. He'll love you until you get rid of all the crap in your life. He'll love you like that because he's a God like that. Love is not weak. Love is very strong. And I think, and I think when we start with love, then we can move uh, to sharing the word and the gospel. But I think it's because we're so divided with our different denominational denominational things and we don't baptize in this or we don't speak in tongues, we do speak in tongues. You have to uh, speak in tongues to prove that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't. We, we wear jeans, we wear suits, and all that little fo fo foxes that are spoiling the vine. Well, the world just needs Jesus. They just need to know that he saves, he keeps, he died for them, and he loves them. And they need to know that salvation is a free gift gift that only the Lord can give. My, I don't know, I guess my heart is just so heavy because it feels the weight of today. It feels the weight of this. And I'm not saying that the Lord can't heal it, but I'm saying, church, we need to wake up and get right. We need to stop playing this thing like it's um, like, this is a little Sunday service high. This is a game where it's not a game. Lives are at stake here. People are at stake here. And we, we've got to understand the world that we're living in, we're in trouble. And I'm not, but the Lord can, can save it if we would just be the vehicle. God, God is not going to just come down and totally save the world. He's going to use us to do that. He's going to use us to be his hands and feet if we're available. I believe that every pastor, every leader, under the sound of my voice, needs to get down on their knees and pray needs to have church prayer gatherings about what to do about the state of the world. And we need to admit that we don't know what to do. Because some, like, the first step, I think, for change is to admit that, Lord, this cross is too heavy for us to bear. To bear. We need strategy. And I think when we pray for strategy for our different churches or whatever, the Lord will give us the correct strategy. But, but as long as we continue to uh, come to church and just do the churchy thing, He's not going to give us strategy. We need to wake up church because we're losing a world. We're losing a generation. And the future, but saying that, I think the future is still looking very bright. If we can get it together, we, we need to get it together. We need to start praying, start fasting, start developing strategy on how to, to um, bring people into the kingdom. Whether you have a big church or a small church, we all can do something. And there, 
whatever the mandate of your church is, you can you can do something within that mandate. You just have to ask God for a strategy and you just need to reach out people reach for people with love because when you reach for people with love they're open to what you have to say but when you reach for people with judgment and condemnation it turns them off and the, the Bible says there is no condemnation for those in Christ conviction is a, is a different thing Conviction only comes from the Holy Spirit. Condemnation comes from the devil and people. And I think too many times we've condemned people instead of, instead of um, using love on them. And that's why they don't want the church. That's why they don't want the gospel. And the Lord is saying, you have emotion. The Lord is saying, I need you. I need you, Canada, to rise up in prayer. I need you to rise up in fasting. I need you. I need you to listen to my strategy. I need you to listen to my men and women of God. And he's saying to the men and women of God, the pastor and the preachers and the teachers and the fivefold ministry, I need you to speak what's in your heart without fear. I need you to pro proclaim what I've given you without fear, without, without apology. Because I hear a lot of preachers say, I'm sorry for saying this, or they hold back. But the Lord is saying now, it's not time to hold back. The world is in a mess and they need to hear what you need to say. As long as you say it in love and not to, t to intentionally offend people. And as long as it's the word of God, say it. So, because often I hear pastors start something and, they, and then they say, no, no, I can't say that. But you not saying that could hinder someone's deliverance, whatever it is. Because when you there's a point in preaching when you have no to follow the no notes, but there's a point in preaching when often not you, it's like an outer body experience and you come out of your body and you start saying things that weren't in the notes and you start hitting. They're like fiery darts. And you're like, why am I saying this? Why am I going here? You're going there. I'll tell you why you're going there. You're going there because someone in that crowd, someone in that congregation needs to hear it that way. That's why you're going there. So when you hold back, uh, pastors and preachers, you're, actor, you're actually prohibiting someone's deliverance. And he says, I need you not to hold back. I need you to speak my word in season and out of season. And if they don't like it, that's fine. As long as it's my word and from my voice, that's all you need to know. And you don't need to know how they're responding how they're receiving this, how, how, oh, will they like me afterwards? Who cares if they don't like you? They didn't call you. God called you. And you need to understand that if he called you there, he will keep you there. And it doesn't matter what anybody in your church or your congregation wants to say about it. I hope you, I hope you were stirred by this sermon. It, it was just something that was in the heart of God that he gave to me to share with you.
today and I hope it stirred you I hope it convicted your spirit and have a blessed day and what I said to pastors goes to regular goes to non-pastors as well because I know sometimes God we will be in a conversation with something with someone and the Holy Spirit will say say this to someone or do that to someone and we don't do it because we're just too afraid or whatever but like I said to preachers a minute ago, minute ago if you don't say it if you don't do what he's he's called you to do you could be prohibiting someone's deliverance someone's uh, life because every word you say is a seed and that's why words are important so the seeds you sow are the words you speak and you may not you may not know the seeds that you planted in that person's life but they will grow and they will produce fruit and that's why I would say to parents now I don't have children but I would say to parents be careful of the seeds you sow into your children's life be careful what you speak about your children even when they're not there even when they're not present be careful what you speak to them and definitely be careful what you say to them. Never, ever, ever, even in anger, call your children stupid or dumb or say they'll never amount to every, uh, anything. They can't do everything, but they can do something. And nurture, and nurture that seed and look for seeds. Bye guys. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Call from Francis Margaret. Call from Francis Margaret. Call from Francis Margaret.